Hey, I'm Nico. So this video will be about frames and logic from Project Red. Red Power 2 for old timers like me. This is not a mod spotlight, but more a general uses, do's and don'ts, techniques, overall understanding of logic gates and frames. Uh, you can see more stuff like this uh, in some of my older videos. Warning though that they are not very good. The content is good. My lack of editing and general knowledge of making a video, which still sucks, is really bad. Anyhow, I'm hoping by the end of this you will understand and be able to make something like that in the background. But first, we start here. So the first thing you want to be aware of are your chunk orders. Um, as you can see, all these frames are in one chunk. These frames are all in one chunk. Um, granted, if you have an extra large project like the hole over there, that itself is one chunk, and then each individual piece outside of it underneath are separate chunks but you want to keep your frames and logic um, in the same chunk uh, as much as possible um, reason being that even though this chunk and this chunk are next to each other they might not be read in that order and there's only one thread in minecraft and it'll become even worse like right here so if you were to build in this section which has four different chunks these necessarily don't read in any specific order you know it can be completely behind and that will cause frame lag um delays miss tip miss clicks and you know it's just better to avoid it uh the next thing you should be aware about um is how the cabling can interact with each other um, how you can prevent it from interacting with each other. Basically, this goes for any cabling that is a non-bundled uh, cable. And by bundled, I mean this here. Uh, these are two separate ones. This is a green bundled and a red bundle. Those won't interact together. Um, but pretty much all other cables, uh, the solo colors also like bl black here and yellow here and white those won't interact um but you can prevent cables from interacting with each other through covers um you have to be careful when you do it because covers will also color code uh the cable but it will still interact like this one here will interact it's not actually blocked until you put a cover there and now it's blocked you know assuming that you didn't have this piece here and the same thing with this even though that that is blue and that's red they'll connect so be aware of that um this here is another thing that you should be very aware about um when placing your motors uh for frames you need you know usually two directions if it's you know gonna go back and forth uh this is incorrect you don't want the them to go in their relative direction like the top one doesn't go up and the bottom one goes down yeah, it seems like that would make sense but it doesn't um this one here is the bottom one goes up and the top one goes down this is correct and the reason why is of detracking or derails or off track, however you want to call it. So if we go up, so that went up two. Let's go up two with this one. One, two. So they're equal, right? Well, if this one were to happen to have a misclick or something got off, it can't go any higher. It is, you know, not there. It can't get untracked. This one, if there is a misclick or miscalculation, 
it is now off and then you know with it being a frames it can get stuck on something um it can pull a wire um and so you want to avoid that and to get this back on you're actually going to have to you know build two and i can't grab a frame build two more and pull it down so and you can say well i just why not just have two more well this is two more frames that's got to calculate anything that it's attached to it's also looking for the block next to it to see if it can grab so this is just a waste of you know cpu power um another thing to be aware of is covers and panels so covers here will make it make it to where nothing sticks to it so if you do this here it doesn't stick well a panel which is before the covers it's actually two covers is what's here and it'll actually allow you to grab uh, wire. And this is actually two pieces of wire. This is a alloy wire and a framed alloy wire. Or you can do a gate. You can interact with the gate like anything else. Uh, if you had another panel here, you can bring the wire down. So panels or for, you know, allowing to you to attach to the frames um my next thing i want to talk about is repeaters i hate repeaters uh, they have their use uh, i see people use them all the time most people want to use them as a delay um which you know they do but i would recommend that you use a state cell um they do this does a lot more, but this can also delay. And if you see, this is about as close timing as I can get. This one's a little bit faster. This one's a little bit slower. You can speed this one up or slow it down. Um, the main issue with this is, it, say someone wants to interact with your machine and they don't know how it works and they just want to sit here and click it. Well, if you notice the two, watch this one and this one here these two the the outputs if you watch them the repeater is going to let somebody you know keep doing it and this can actually lead to misfires and you know out of sync where this uh, state cell will not it resets every time someone jams it so it actually has to complete its loop you know which makes it invaluable um just to give you a complete understanding of how this state cell works. Um, so it's got a built-in timer, which is represented by this arrow, and it will move this way when you set the timer. So if you set it for three seconds, when you give it an input signal, it goes in on this side here, and it will start this timer. And this timer will run for the three seconds we have set. And at the end of the three seconds, it will make a pulse, which is what we were using to uh, duplicate the um, repeater. But also why it's running for the three seconds, it's gonna allow a solid signal. So this will just be a pass through for three seconds. And then at the end of the three seconds, that pass through is cut off and you get a pulse. This here is to lock the timer and you will get a complete pass through and it locks the pass through and it doesn't start the timer until after this is unlocked and then it'll complete the timer. Um, I personally don't find a use for this. I've used it once or twice, but you know, for the most part, I generally use the uh, input the timed uh, output, the timed pulse, and the timed pass through. Um, this here is a NAND gate, and this is used a lot of times, uh, specifically for me with timers. And I have this NAND gate deactivated on this side and this side. 
because if you don't have a signal into the timer, it's just going to run. And whatever you do, don't leave a timer running on a server. This creates um, lag, uh, you know, TPS issues. So running timers all the time is a bad, bad thing. So we're basically giving it a NAN signal, a NAN signal, uh, which stands for not AND, by the way. I'm turning off those two, so because it would require all of those if I did it. But so now, once this signal runs, so this is set for three seconds. When I press this, this is going to go solid, and it's going to let this run for three seconds. Well, three seconds. And these are one second ticks equals three pulses. So basically what we've done is turned one button push into three pulses. So you can move or interact with something three times. If I change this to four or even five, that button press is now going to be equal to five ticks. And that's generally how I do my ticking. Um, in fact, it is used here in this setup. And I guess I'll go ahead and show you this setup. Now, this is your general frame use. Um, this is a basic, you know, vanilla up and down. It uses the same button. Uh, one thing I want to point out is if I sit here and spam this, it's going to activate and it's going to go all the way to the top, but it can't go down until I let it finish. So if somebody was just sitting here and clicking it, it's not going to misfire or, you know, get off track because someone's just jamming up their buttons. Or if you were using a repeater, it would. So we're going to let it run for a second. Now it's done. It'll work in reverse. I'm going to go ahead and explain how this works. And, you know, this is one of the more useful uh, designs. So this button gets a green signal. It goes in the bundle cable. I should state that the bundle cables are all connected. Goes in, gets a green, looks for a green. Goes to the state cell, which will activate for three seconds. So remember... It's going to pass through here for three whole seconds. And at the end of three seconds, it's going to give us a yellow signal because we put a yellow wire there. So for three seconds and one second intervals will give us three pulses. It's going to pulse this line now three times. This line is now going to go in here and in here. This here is an AND gate. So this means this side, this torch, and this middle side. So these two have to be active for it to pass through to here. Since this will pulse three times, this one, middle one, will unlock three times, but it can't complete because it does not have this side. This side is affected by the toggle latch. So it would complete now, but it won't complete now. But since it's doing them both, it'll go here also. And this side is complete. And this pulse three times. So three pulses will go through to white. This side's deactivated here. And this side's deactivated here. You do that with the screwdriver. So now we have three white pulses. We follow it, white can't go anywhere but here, which tells this motor to go up. At the same time that those three pulses have gone through, this is now finished, and it has done its three seconds, which creates a yellow pulse. The yellow pulse goes in here, comes out here, and will flip the toggle latch back the other way. So the next time you press it and Pulses come through. It can't go this way. It can only go that way. I'm going to show you that now. So 
So white's going, it's going up, the toggle latch flips. So this time it's going to go through black and it's going to flip the toggle latch once it's done. It's as simple as that. So this is your basic teeter-totter one switch controls it all. And since it's bundled cable, you can put these buttons everywhere. You know, you don't just need one button. You just need more green cables everywhere. So add that. Add a button, you know, to a block right here. You got another button. Does the same thing no matter what. Um, this here, the whole reason I'm kind of doing this video is I was uh, searching YouTube for Project Red, Frames, and Logic. And the only video that I've seen, or I guess the latest video, which was about the month old, was a guy making a door. And his door was set up like this. His logic was different, but his frames were all the same. And it looks great, you know, having them open different ways and all that. But this is a lot for such a small project. So you have four frame sets one up top one to the left one to the right and one below um, these each require two motors so you have eight motors total which include you know requires a lot more batteries a lot more you know wiring for batteries a lot more overall bundled cable and then his logic was completely different i'm not really going to get into that um but this is just a lot for such a small project. Um, I do want to point out these boards here. Um, so I generally like to lay out my logic in uh, board style. Um, this is the same as that that's over there. I mean, it's identical. I just have it set up to where it's up off the ground it kind of looks and I can kind of see it and organize it. You know, I can also move in. I can actually make this a lot tighter, but I kind of want it to, to be able to show y'all. But uh, general rule of how this works is, so if we take a cover, so this is where one cube would be, and this is where one cube would be. Um, if you want to look at it this way, which it's set up, you need to take this cube and that edge of it and if you want to look at it this way you need to take this cube and then this edge of it so basically this NAND gate here can't go on this one but it can go on that one it can't go on this one but it can't go on that one so i can't put anything on the back of these but i could start another row right there and i can do it and you can put multiple wires in and out of all of this. Um, but I think this looks a lot cleaner. However, there's even better way now. And I'll get to that here in a minute. But as you can see, state cell, NAND gate, timer. State cell, NAND gate, timer. Then we got the two AND gates and the toggle latch. AND gate, toggle latch, AND gate. So these are all the same. It's just stacked on top of each other. You can actually lay this here down flat and then stack this one on top of that if you wanted to. Um, but this makes this you can you know, string this out anywhere it doesn't have to be right here you know you got bundled cable um the next thing i want to go over is this setup and this is going to be using counters i should mention by the way the and gate is the most important gate of all the gates um, this allows you to do combinations of things and you know, just think of it as a math problem being, so this middle torch I have turned off, but the math problem would be 
lime green and and we're gonna call it and a plus being magenta so lime green plus magenta equal black and that's what the and gate is if this was activated you know and the red came all the way through it'd be green plus red plus magenta equal black and that's how you have to think of the and gate but you can throw in another thing you can put a nor gate here which means that it would be magenta has to have a signal on but the lime green has to be off if it's ever on it won't work so it needs to be off and you're turning this on to off with the nor gate but it's still going in the and gate so i'm taking a negative value to make this all equal black but we'll get into that later on um so this here is a combination lock and currently you know there are six buttons there is a pressure pad with a uh, lamp up top the lamp is just to show that the pressure pad is active but you know i don't there could be an infinite amount of combinations because you don't know how many times each one could be pressed or needs to be pressed or anything this particular combination right now is one two three one two and it is only that um that right now was uh if i did one two three four one two doesn't work if i did one two one two three doesn't work uh it has to be one two three one two and it literally has to go in that order all right, so I'm going to explain how this works in what I think is probably the second most important um, logic gate, and you hardly ever see it used, is the counter. So right now, I am going to, I'm going to, this is a white signal. This button is white. I pressed it one time. So we now have a white of one. Just remember, I pressed that button once. So we're going through here and it's looking for all the whites. And white can go this way and it can also go this way. I should state that this bundled cable is all connected to this. So this is all interacting with each other. The bundled cable goes back behind there. So it finds a white here and a white here let's open up this counter actually before we open up the counter i should point out a few things this plus is a um increment and it's referring to this here this plus does not refer to this this is an output on the plus side once the plus is completed and this minus is referring to this input here. And this is also an output when there is nothing. Actually, let me clear it out and show you. So this has a value of zero right now. So this is lit, but we're not using it as a condition at all in anything. And as you see, it has a state of zero, meaning there's a value, there's no clicks on it currently. Uh, let me go back to the one just so you can understand this. So you can change the maximum value and that is what you want it to count to. Right now it is set to a three. You can change it to whatever. So once it gets to three, it can't go any higher than three. And we have the increment, which is this plus side here. 
this line on the plus side, which is our white side. And that means that every time you get a button, a white signal, it's going to add one. That's our one button press right here. And then the decrement is on this side here. And every time it gets a red signal, it's going to subtract this amount. Now, 3 minus 1 is going to be negative 2, but there are no negatives. 0 is the minimum that it will go. There are no negatives. If I hit anything that had a red signal, which this top one here happens to have, it is now going to subtract 3, and it's going to give us a 0. If I go back to this um so we have our one and we need to get to the three uh to complete this step to move this up to complete this same thing for this one this is doing the same thing but it's got a different outcome this is a four and a four here and this leads to a trap. So if I do one, two, so I've done three. So we now have a value of three, which is this one's maximum. It can't go any higher than that. And since its maximum is met that we set, it is now giving us a lime green signal. This lime green signal is going to go up here into the bundled cable and at the same time it goes to this AND gate which this AND gate states black and lime green excuse me lime green and magenta equal black well black is not correct right now we don't have a positive because we don't have a magenta signal but this lime green is set and that has deactivated this torch over here on this AND gate so if I were to now hit the magenta button, this would go in here and would be able to go through to this counter, which this is set to two. So the same counter, it's a two, it's a two decrement, and that would give this a plus one because this first has been met. But let's say that we do that so this now has a plus one out of its maximum two but we do another white well it just reset because this had a maximum of four and it had a state of three and I've set that up as a trap so once it gets to four it completes its maximum which sends the signal up, which I have set to red, which feeds back into itself and it subtracts four, bringing this back to zero. But it also sends this red signal all throughout the cable, which resets this counter, which was the magenta that we had at one, and it resets this counter to back to zero, also. So you have to start over. So it's a trap, meaning that you have to hit white three times first and only three times if you hit it before f more than three times it's going to reset if you hit uh magenta before you complete this three times magenta doesn't even recognize it so let's go ahead and move on one two three again this has been completed it's got a value of three out of its maximum three completing lime green unlocking this so magenta will now allow a signal through this AND gate and activate this counter and we press this one two we are done it's opened this has completed its circuit because it's got its two from here and it is now magenta and lime green equal black.
pitch black goes all the way back here to this door. And, you know, this is a very basic combination lock. Uh, I think it's fairly easy to understand. Um, this would be fairly useful on a server. Uh, a few things that I'll point out is, is this can be even more compacted, but I wanted to be able to visually show you all what's going on. Um, but you can get smaller than this. Like I said here, this is, you know, how I usually do stuff. But now, I mean, it's not new. It's been around for years now, but this, actually, this one here, this is the same thing as all of that. And you can see how this is lit. If I, this black signal is not lit because it's the same condition as that. If I do one, two, three, and remember this light is off. One, two, this light is now on. So you're taking this whole board and you're making that. So all you need is a ribbon cable in and a ribbon cable out and, you know, your buttons and the lock so I mean it would literally just be a few cables for this lock um, this one here is my lock uh, 2 and I've added a few other conditions to it to make it a little bit more difficult um, now it is also three whites and two uh, magentas but I have the condition set into it to where I have to stand on this pressure plate so this brown pressure plate has to be lit well not the uh, pressure plate has a brown signal to it which is where this brown lamp is coming from so if I do one two three and I have to be off of it to do one two so this will because that combination worked for the other ones, it works also, but it's also with this one here. So this lock is a little bit more difficult than that because you have to follow that exactly. If I did, I'll just let's, let's do this. One, two, three, one, two. Everything's lit, unlocked, but that's not. If I go up here. And I did this one, two, three. I'm standing on the pressure plate, and I go ahead and press this on the pressure plate. That didn't unlock because I had I was supposed to get off the pressure plate. So you can make some pretty difficult locks. Um, you know, no one's going to be interfering with your stuff. Um, these here are, you know, pretty awesome. And basically, you're going to make a blueprint. This is in Project Red Fabrication. You're going to take a workbench, IC printer, um, and the IC blueprint. You'll have to make a chip. It's not expensive. But you still need all the items that it takes to make uh, this. It actually looks like you need a lot less, so it might be cheaper. Um, but it's, you know, definitely a lot smaller. Um, and here is an example of that, uh, second lock here. And we have our inputs on this side, which a bundle cable is going to connect right over here. And it's using the brown, white, red, and magenta. The brown being the pressure plate. And it goes up this way, which is this top counter. If you look over here, that's this this counter here. Um, this counter is this one here. But this is where I've added in the condition. So instead of the white going directly into that counter, see this white goes up. And it would normally go in this counter, which is right here. 
we've added a secondary a precondition and it's an AND gate and it states that for a signal to go through to that counter that we were just looking at you have to have a brown and white which means you have to stand on the brown on the pleasure plate which is brown and you have to press the button three times so then that will get the value of three then if you look at this over here you know remember it unlocks green which unlocks this and signal which fed into the uh, magenta counter but if you look at it we now have the original and gate and it just went from into the magenta so you just had to have this counter undone but now I've added another AND gate and a NOR gate. And this NOR gate basically states that the brown has to be off while you're pressing magenta. So if you're still standing on that pressure plate, the magenta won't work. And so that I've modified that original lock with some more conditions. You can throw all kinds of stuff in there. You know, it's up to you. Um, so try to do that pretty quick because I know this is getting fairly long as far as this goes I'll give you a quick glimpse in it but I'm going to make this into a separate video um, but this is a multi frame uh, set setup this outer rim is a frame set and then there's four so there's five frame sets here which means that there's two motors per frame set. So that's a total of, uh, I guess, 10 motors. Um, and then this is my debug station. This here is all the logic for it. But I will make another video about this here. And this is going to teach us about um, cascading or, you know, like a domino effect, you know, where once one frame step completes one, it will activate the next and uh, that will be the next video thank you Nico out